In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use the Seek Structured Logging Server for real-time search and analysis of your application logs. We're going to use Serilog to implement logging in our application, and then we're going to connect it to the Seek server to ingest the log data so that we can analyze it to detect any problems. First of all, let me introduce you to Seek or SEQ. It's a self-hosted structured logging server that allows you to perform search and analysis on your structured logs. And you can also set up real-time alerting using Slack or email if you encounter a spike in your application logs. If you are familiar with Application Insights in Azure, Seek is a similar service to this, except it's not hosted in the cloud, you have to host it yourself on your server. As far as pricing goes, Seek is free for individual use and development, but if you are working in a larger team, you have to buy a license. So now that you have an idea of what Seek is, Let's see how we're going to integrate it with our .NET application. I'm going to install Serilog to this application, and I'm also going to add the Seek Sync, which is a way for Serilog to write data to other services. In this case, we're going to be ingesting our application logs to Seek. So let me look for Serilog, and I'm going to install the Serilog ASP.NET Core package, and then I'm going to look for Seek, and I will install the Serilog Syncs Seek library, which is how we're going to connect Serilog to our Seek server. With the NuGet packages installed, let's go ahead and configure Serilog in our application. So I'm going to access the host builder and I can call the use Serilog method. I'm going to use the override that gives me access to the host builder context and the logger configuration. And I'm just going to say logger configuration read from, and then I'll call the configuration method. And I'm going to use the host builder context to get an instance of the I configuration service. So what I'm actually doing here is my preferred approach to configure Serilog with an application. And this is using the application settings that we have configured. In this case, those will live in our app settings JSON file. I'm going to show you the JSON configuration required for Serilog in just a moment, but first, Let's go ahead and define our seek instance in the docker compose file. So I'm going to add another service to my docker compose file and let's call it eShop seek. I'm going to define which image to use and this will be the data last seek latest image. Then I'll give it a container name. Let's call it eShop seek which is following the convention that I already have in place. Now I'm going to define an environment variable to accept the end user license agreement. So I'll say accept EULA and give it a value of yes. Let's also expose the ports that we're going to need for the Seek server. So the default port is 5341. So that's the port I'm going to expose. So expose the port 5341. And I'm also going to expose an HTTP port for the dashboard that I'm going to show you in the browser and let's put it on port 8081. So I'll say expose port 8081 using the internal port of 80. And with this in place, let's head over to my application settings development JSON file where I'm going to add my Serilog configuration. So I'm actually going to add Serilog on top of the existing logging section and I'm going to get rid of this section entirely a bit later. But first of all, let's configure the Serilog section. I need to define an array of the syncs that I want to use with Serilog, and I'm going to add two of them. The first one will be the console sync. So I'll say Serilog syncs console. And then I'm going to add the one that we actually are interested in, and this is our seek server sync. So this sync will take care of writing our application logs to the Seek server automatically in the background. Then I'm going to define a section for the minimum log level and the default value will be information so that I can get more details in my development environment. So this section here basically replaces the logging section that I have here so I can get rid of it. If I want to, I can add an override section for a specific namespace for example, I can say anything in the Microsoft namespace 
use the log level of warning, but I'm also going to give it the value of the information log level so that I can get more details in my seek instance. The next section that I need to define is where I want to actually be writing my logs. The first output is going to be our console. So I'll give it the name of console and this will use the console sync to write our application logs. And then I'm going to use the seek as our destination and give it the arguments that it needs to connect to the seek server. So we pass that using the args parameter and we can give it the value that it's expecting, which is another object containing a server URL property, which is going to point to our seek instance. Now, because I'm using Docker Compose, I need to reference the container name that I have here and then use the port that I exposed on this container instance. So we're going to say HTTP and then use the name of the container and connect using the port 5341. Lastly, I'm just going to add a section to enrich our application logs using the thread ID, machine name and the log context. With our serial log set up in place, we can start the application. This configuration is going to be applied with our call to the read from configuration that we added in the program file. And we're going to start ingesting log into our seek server. If I start my application now and open up my Docker desktop instance, you're going to see that my containers are spinning up. And here is our seek server running our seek image. And if we head to the 8081 port where the seek dashboard is exposed, you're going to see that we already have some application logs that we got during the startup of our application. You can see some database commands being executed by NAD Framework, some logs from our Quartz library setting up the background jobs and so on. So now head over to Postman and send a few requests to the customer's endpoint, which is used to register a new customer in the system. So if I send this with an invalid email, I'm going to get back a 400 bad request response telling me that the email address that I specified is not valid. So I'm going to send this invalid request a few times. And now I'm going to head over to the seek dashboard. I'm going to refresh the logs that we have and you'll see that the error logs are now showing up with the validation exception. So if I open up the error log here, you'll see that I'm getting the exception message from seek. The exception message is explaining what specifically went wrong. And I also have a structured property here, which is called message. Its value says validation failed. And this is coming from my exception handling middleware. So if I head over to my code for a moment and show you what's inside of the exception handling middleware, and we're specifically interested in this line here, which is logging the exception using the error log level. Now notice the exception message here saying exception occurred and then message. And this value here is actually our property on the structured log. Its value is coming from the message of the exception. And we can use this property on the structured log to do filtering in the seek server. What that will look like is we can say the message and then we can filter on this property. So let's say that it's equal to validation failed. And if we run this query, we're going to get all of the structured logs containing this property value. And if you open up the structured log, you'll see that this is true. This is very practical if you're looking for specific errors in your application and seek allows you to filter the structured logs using the properties that are exposed on the logs themselves. So if I head back to the exception handling middleware, I'm going to add an if statement here, checking if the exception instance is a validation exception. And I'm going to capture the validation exception into a variable. And let's do an if else statement here. So in the else statement for any other exception, I'm just going to log what we already had in place. But for a validation exception, I'm going to update the format of the message to add another property. So first of all, what I can do is add the errors that are present on the validation exception. So I can specify those as errors and I want to serialize them into JSON. So I can add the at sign in front of this property. And now I need to pass in a value for the errors property. So I can say validation exception and then here is the errors property. And you can even pass in the entire exception object if you wanted to 
by specifying an exception property and then you need to pass in the actual exception. So let me start the application now and I'll show you what the structured log looks like. I'm going to send one, two, three and four failure requests for example and then let's move over to seek where I'm going to run the same search query looking for a message property containing the validation failed value. Now you'll see that we are getting the old logs here and here are the new ones that are enriched with our specific values. So if I open up here, now you'll see that my structured log contains the errors property, which is an array containing the validation error. And you can see the specific error message that caused the validation exception. Then you also have the exception property, which contains the raw exception value including the errors that we already have here, which is a bit redundant, but this is just an example to show you what you can do with Seek and structured logging with Serilog. So Seek allows you to ingest your structured logs into the Seek server and then filter them based on whatever condition that you want to check. Additionally, Seek also gives you access to a monitoring dashboard where you can see some more details about your application. For example, you can see how many logs of which level you are getting. Then you can see the number of events over time. I don't have too many requests, so it's not showing a whole lot of details and you can filter this based on the time horizon. So if I look at the last five minutes, I'll get just the requests that I sent in the last few minutes. One Serilog feature that you can add to your application is to use Serilog request logging. So you add it as just another middleware to the request pipeline by calling use Serilog request logging and now this middleware will start writing structured logs for your api requests and then you can analyze these logs in seek so this is everything you have to do and i'm going to start the application and show you the result i'm going to send a few get requests to the get products endpoint which returns a list of products in this case i don't have any in the database but this isn't relevant for the example if i open up seek and update the events you're going to see the structured logs appearing for our get products request and you can see all of the properties that we have available for our api requests for example you can see what is the query string that was used for this specific request then you can see the complete url in this log statement here and you also have a value in the elapsed milliseconds property telling you how long it took to complete this request. So then I can use this property to look for any structured logs where the elapsed milliseconds is, let's say, greater than five seconds. And if I keep increasing this value, eventually I'll filter out all of these slow logs. For example, I can use this to find any outliers. Let's say this one, which took more than 200 milliseconds to complete. And then I can further examine what was the issue that caused this specific query than the other ones in my application. I hope you enjoyed this video about structured logging using Serilog and Seek. And if you did, then make sure to smash the like and the subscribe buttons on your way out. And until next time, stay awesome.